In this video, we'll show you how to mount this size 32 air to open actuator on a 24,000 series valve assembly and properly set the bench range. In this case, we'll be setting a bench range of 5 to 15. Before performing any work, always be sure to read and follow all safety precautions as they are outlined in the instruction manual. To get started, we'll make sure that the stem nuts are installed and counter tightened on the valve stem as shown at the bottom of the stem. Carefully lower the actuator onto the valve assembly and install the yoke drive nut with the rounded side facing down. Then install the travel indicator disc. Apply a small amount of anti-seize to the valve stem threads. The valve stem needs to be carefully threaded onto the actuator stem by one thread using the counter tightened nuts. Air will need to be applied to the assembly before we make further adjustments to the stem. Install a pressure connection into the lower diaphragm casing of the actuator and apply 15 PSI. As pressure is increased, the actuator will move and make contact with the bonnet. Be sure to keep your hands clear of the actuator and the valve. With the actuator contacting the top of the bonnet, hand tighten the yoke drive nut. Make sure the actuator is positioned correctly with the travel scale on the left. Leave the air applied to the assembly and continue to adjust the valve stem into the actuator stem using the lock nuts until some resistance is felt. Back the stem off a half a turn. Continue to secure the actuator to the valve body using a hammer and a blunt tipped cold chisel to tighten the yoke drive nut. With the actuator mounted, we'll now perform the bench range to set the proper spring compression and travel for the assembly. Locate the assembly nameplate and verify the listed bench range for the assembly. These are the pressure values that will move the assembly over its rated travel span when set correctly. Start the bench range by removing all pressure to the actuator so that the valve plug is making contact with the valve seat. Next, we'll slowly increase the pressure looking for the initial movement of the assembly. Movement should be detected at the lower bench range value. If not, we'll need to make some adjustments by threading the valve stem in or out of the assembly. Before any adjustments are made, increase the actuator pressure to 15 PSI to move the valve plug away from the valve seat to prevent damage. If the movement was observed at a pressure below the lower bench range value, the valve stem connection will need to be lengthened by turning the valve stem out of the actuator stem. If the movement was observed at a pressure above the lower bench range, the valve stem connection will need to be shortened by turning the valve stem into the actuator stem. After making the needed adjustments, remove pressure and monitor the travel again. Continue to make adjustments and test for initial movement at the lower bench range value until the appropriate settings are achieved. This may need to be repeated several times. At this point, apply 15 PSI and adjust the stem nuts to secure the indicator disc below the actuator stem. Loosen the screws holding the travel scale and align the 100% travel marking to the indicator disc as needed. The last thing we'll need to verify is that the correct travel is achieved. Slowly decrease the pressure to the actuator to zero PSI. The valve plug should make contact with the valve seat and the travel indicator disc should now line up with the 0% rated travel mark on the scale. Bench range and travel are now properly set for this assembly. For more information, visit emerson.com backslash Fisher or contact your local Emerson sales representative. Thanks for watching.